Hey guys, I'm back and welcome back to my channel. Um, recently, I've gotten a lot of questions and comments and just general messages about Rex begonias in water culture, propagating them in water. Uh, so I figured let me do kind of like a tutorial of what I do to transfer these guys to prepare them for their life in water and propagation in water. So I got myself some new Rex begonias that were in soil. This was from a big box store. Um, I just unpotted it. And as you can see, the root system is not the best, which is um, pretty common because Rex begonias don't have sturdy roots, very fibrous roots and kind of uh, thin, but they regrow their roots very quickly and um, the water roots will take over in no time. So it's not a problem and I'm not concerned. And I also have a whole bunch of leaves to choose from to do some water propagation. So first thing I did was obviously I unpotted this plant. Really pretty, pretty Rex. Uh, I unpotted the plant, got rid of all the soil I possibly could. Uh, there may be still some particles of soil in there, um, but without doing major damage to the stems and the, and the petioles, the leaf stems, I got as much of it out as I could. There's still some perlite in there, which is fine because perlite isn't gonna cause any problems with rot or anything while this is transitioning. But during the transition period, uh, uh, what I like to do is definitely rinse out the water every few days uh, just to make sure that these old roots that aren't going to make it don't um, cloud up the water and create a rotting situation because some of these will survive, but some of them definitely won't. I'm just used to that happening. So the, the changing of water is very important, at least in the beginning. Once they get established with their water roots, once a week, once every two weeks max, I wouldn't go more than two weeks, um, just make sure that you change out the water. I mean, that's what I do. So I got this all cleaned up. All of the soil is off of them. So now what I'm gonna do, I gotta switch hands, because I'm a righty. I'm gonna take off some of these damaged leaves for my propagation. So let's see if I can get a good angle here. I'm gonna get as low as I can to get most of this stem for this plant. So let me do that now. Snip. Okay, there's one leaf. This is one that I'm going to propagate. Um, it looks like there's an issue with the petiole a little higher up, but I don't think it's gonna cause a problem. If it does, you can see that there's like a little bend there. If it does, I can always just recut it here and uh, submerge this much into the water. But for now, I'm not gonna worry about it. Let's find another leaf that isn't doing so well on the plant. I don't wanna take like really, really good, healthy young leaves because that's gonna be supplying the mother plant <laughs> I have to pluralize the mother plants um, while they get adjusted to water culture. So this is an older plant. There's a little damage there. So I'll take that one. I'm going to just cut it close to the base. Make sure that's the only thing I'm getting. Okay, that's number two. And I will take one more. Let me see. Um, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, I'll take this big one here. Might as well, right? It's an older leaf. Um, right there, I'll cut close to the base. Oop. And this little one here looks like he wants to come off, so I'm going to take this one off too. It's young and it's little, but it's coming from a, a smaller plantlet, which is fine. Um, I don't think it won't root, it won't propagate. I think it will, but um, sometimes you never know. When they're too young, they may not have enough energy in their own um, leaf and stem in order to uh, get you some roots and some plantlets. So, so here's the plant, really the cluster of plants that I'm gonna root. You could separate these if you want. It's just, I don't want to, um, to separate all of them and then have this little tiny skinny plant. Let me cut the rest of this petiole off. Little tiny skinny plant in this big cup. I mean, it's not a huge cup, just like a maybe a, an eight or a ten ounce cup, maybe eleven ounce. I'm not sure, but anyway. So what I'm gonna do is take my plant and put it in the cup. And again, there isn't anything in this cup yet, but I'm only gonna put about a half inch of water into here 
because if I put way too much water, I risk not just rotting those roots that are going to be adjusting, and some of them are going to die off. That's what happens. But I also risk rotting some of the leaf stems, the petioles. So let me get my little cup of water, and I'm going to just pour a little bit in there. Let's see if that's good enough. Okay. Mm, that's about a centimeter. I'm going to put just a little bit more in there. Sorry if I'm moving the camera all over the place. I'm trying to do two things at once, and I'm not good at that. <laughs> okay. That's about what I'm going to leave it at for now. Um, again, like a half inch of water is what I do. So you can see the plant hasn't uh, wilted at all since it was taken out and rinsed. It's just been sitting here waiting for me to do the video. So the plant hasn't shown any signs of stress or suffering, no wilting, and it definitely won't now as long as I keep that water clean. Okay, so that has to stay clean. I'm gonna put this under lights. This is an LED, um, just a, a screw in LED light that is uh, considered daylight. So it's got a lot of bright blues and maybe a little bit of very slight red coloring, which is good for the plants, um, at least for the growth. And, um, and we'll come back to this and I'll show you how it does. Again, we may have some loss, we may have some leaves that don't make it, we may have some roots that don't make it, maybe even some of these plantlets that kind of struggle. But as long as I keep that water nice and clean, um, it should be okay. Now, the last step we're gonna do are the leaves. Some people say, oh, you gotta cut that petiole, it's too long. I don't follow that rule. I, I like having a long petiole. Um, some people say, oh, it takes you know too much energy to get, um, or yeah, too much energy to get what it makes in food from the light, from the leaf to where the, the base of the petiole, where the plantlets are growing and the, and the roots are growing. I tend not to follow that rule. I just, I just leave what I have. Um, I don't want to make it too short because then if I lose part of that petiole, that leaf stem, then I have to cut it again and make it even shorter in the water and then I risk getting the actual leaf wet. And if the leaf gets wet for too uh, long a period of time, it'll start to rot because, you know, rot is just... I just hate everything that rots. So <laughs> let's keep this alive. Um, now, one inter interesting thing is more times than not, I get roots and plantlets coming out of the tip that I cut. So right out of that tip, I will get the roots and the little plantlets growing. Now every once in a while, I guess, I don't know if it depends on the variety or just the position that you have the leaf in when it's rooting. Sometimes I even get little plantlets growing out of the base of the leaf, where the petiole meets the leaf, right in there, which is interesting and I think it's kind of cool because then it looks like a little tree. You have this long stem with a little plant growing in the, uh, the base of the leaf. We'll see what happens. I don't know. Um, I've had it happen both ways. I even think I did a video on one of them um, the last time. So we're just putting these guys in, into the water, like so. And a little itty bitty one, we'll put that one right here. Okay, and this plant is gonna go here. They're under the lights. And that should be it. Now, these leaves that are rooting in the water, I'm not going to change it out every couple of days um, because I don't want to keep introducing fresh water um, while this water will probably start to get high concentrations of rooting hormone. Um, that's just my thought. I don't have any proven anything about that, but the more you change out the water, the, uh, the plant will not have this the, the vessel will be more concentrated in rooting hormone from these leaves, and that's what's gonna help the roots develop in the little plantlets. And if I keep changing it out, I just feel like it's gonna slow down the process. I do keep it clean though. If I notice that the water is not clean or starting to get a little cloudy or has a smell, if it has a smell, you're f too far gone. You should have changed it a long time ago. But I definitely keep the water clean, but I'm not gonna just change it for the sake of changing it. This one I have to because there are roots involved, there's still um, remnants of soil and other things in there. And I'm sure there are some dead leaves hidden in there that you just can't see. But that is why I changed the water here until I get some root growth, some new water roots, 
and these guys can sit until maybe a week. I'll take a look. Yeah, I mean, you have to check them because it's like it's like having kids. You got to make sure that they're okay all the time, but you don't necessarily have to do uh, any emergency action unless you see something starting to happen. But I don't want to wait for it to be like too far gone. Anyway, that is my little step by step on transferring to water culture and then water propagation, which you can then create uh, these little plantlets in the water culture and then keep them there if you want. Um, I keep them either in water culture, I've also moved a lot of them into lava rock, and I even grew some and actually still have some that are in, this one is in yarn. I grew this one in my yarn culture and you can see there's new plantlets growing at the base. So um, let me pull this out so you can see better. It grew these beautiful roots all throughout the yarn. You probably can't see them now. Oh, there's a couple of them you can see. And it's growing a new one at the base. And there's some, some old leaves. But anyway, that was just an experiment. It's not like I'm saying, oh yeah, grow them in yarn. Um, I feel like yarn is a great method to propagate things. Definitely, uh, I propagate almost all of my aroids, like pothos, uh, philodendrons, and things like that in that family in yarn because they're st if the yarn is sterile and I never have any rot problems with uh, aroids in yarn and the roots grow really quickly because they're, they're constantly moist but there's a lot of air um, you know, around the yarn. So that's something that I've, uh, I've done. I mean, I have coleus in yarn that have rooted. This one's been in here for a while. This one has a little wicking method going there and there's one back there actually. That one's been in yarn for quite some time. I'm gonna probably pull it out of there, um, but when I don't have enough medium and I wanna propagate because the plants are getting a little unruly, because coleys tend to do that, I'll just plop them in some yarn and keep them damp, and they seem to do fine. Anyway, that is the video, and I will do some updates just so you guys can see, you know, like maintenance and how I, how I keep these guys clean and thriving and happy. And then I'll show you how I feed them with the very, very diluted fertilizer, hydroponic fertilizer. Um, and that's it. So if you have any questions or comments, um, keep them coming because I love talking plants as usual. Uh, if you haven't, you should uh, consider subscribing because this is fun stuff. I love talking about plants and doing some interesting experiments, new ways to grow your plants that may be easier than what you're doing now. Uh, I know for me, Soil has always been a problem for most of my plants. So um, I'm always, you know, experimenting with alternate methods of husbandry. I used that word. I, I did, I promise. I'm sorry. Um, anyway, subscribe if you haven't. Share with your friends. All that good stuff. And I will see you in the next video.